so uh, welcome to another session on uh, statistics uh, we've done one on correlation made easy and today i'll be talking about uh, how to make uh, hypothesis testing and t test easy so uh, i hope i'm audible to everybody yes sir thank you so let's begin the presentation and you know as as uh, uh, we carry on we'll try and even provide you a demonstration on uh, microsoft excel as we've uh, been doing uh, earlier as well so today's presentation is on the essentials of hypothesis testing i'm sure uh, you all can see the screen can someone please confirm yes yes sir very good so let's begin the presentation uh we we know about this uh, these basics about research and uh, we've been repeating that uh, quite often uh this i mean the entire research process can be divided into these uh, nine uh, steps if we can call that i mean it begins with uh, the topic selection then we have uh, uh literature review and then we have the theoretical uh, conceptual uh, framework and that's a very important part of uh, research as you understand without the theoretical framework it, it makes a little sense so uh then we have uh, the research design and finally we uh, after the research design we have to have a data collection so even if it is a qualitative research there is some element of data collection there so it's not just uh, about quantitative methods it's for qualitative methods also because there also you're collecting some information and then how to analyze that data and from that data how do you make conclusions and then finally uh, disseminating the results for everybody so all these things uh, if you see this carefully you'll you'll see that only three uh, there are uh, at least two stages where there's a lot of statistics but you'll realize that e these two stages are related to the way in which you uh, select the topic in which you select the uh, uh, theoretical framework the way you define your research questions or you define your hypothesis and then the research design and finally you come to this step so all these are related as you can understand and today we are going to talk about uh, hypothesis uh, testing basically uh, uh before we start up uh, with hypothesis let me also talk a little bit about uh, uh you know what we mean by the normal curves and you know uh, those kind of things so this is just uh, uh, just a repetition of what i've just shown you this is from uh, the book by andy field here it talks i mean initially when say for example you have a, some kind of a research question just a research uh, just an observation that people who watch reality tv their iq goes down say so this is just an observation so uh, you have some data i mean based on your initial observation you just uh, you, you know have some observation then you have to kind of uh, qualify it and then you know uh, think of some theory that would uh, justify your initial observations from there you can generate a hypothesis it can uh, uh, lead to identification of variables and then that has to be again you know uh, uh tested uh, to theory and then you measure that and finally the analysis uh, happens so it might appear a lot uh, a little bit confusing right now but as we carry on we'll try and demystify uh, some of these steps uh we all know about descriptive statistics so i'll just uh, just to remind you of what we've done earlier we'll uh, kind of talk a little bit about descriptive statistics today also and how excel can very easily help us to uh, find out about the descriptive statistics uh the testing of hypothesis that we're going to do today this is what we know as inferential statistics so we are trying to determine whether there is a uh, causal relationship or whether you know uh, there is some association uh, with with uh, two variables or there are some differences etc so we are trying to draw inferences from the data the earlier one the descriptive statistics is about just describing the uh, population or describing the sample we'll talk about that as well as we go on uh, again this is a repetition of what we've done uh, earlier so uh, these are the variables we talk about uh, independent variable is the variable that we uh, manipulate to get the dependent variable 
so the variable from where we are getting the data is the dependent variable the one which we are manipulating so in certain cases we can manipulate that in other cases we'll have to have different kinds of independent variable say for example if we are uh, uh, if our independent variable is the amount of sunlight and the dependent variable is the, the growth of a plant so we'll have to uh, provide the plant with different elements of uh, sunlight a uh, different uh, intensities of sunlight and then measure the growth or the independent variable could be the time you spend on these online classes and the dependent variable could be the uh, marks you obtain so we might be uh, sending or we might be having students across uh, uh, you know these different categories people who are uh, spending diff i mean variable times on uh, online classes someone is spending less time someone is spending more time and then we try and find out what their marks are so that is the dependent variable it's very important to have a distinction between these two right at the beginning because a lot of the statistical analysis will be based on this so dependent variable d for data d for dependent so dependent variable is the one where we are getting the data from uh, at times there also the, the, these uh, terms are also specified as predictor variables and outcome variables so one is used to predict and you get an outcome out of that uh, we've spoken about moderating variable and uh, mediating variables also earlier uh, i'm sure you remember that mediating variable we told you is one which depends on the uh, independent variable and which causes the dependent variable so uh, i'm not going to uh, into details about that and of course moderating variable is the one which uh, moderates the influence of the predictor variable onto the outcome variable so there are uh, control variables also uh, we uh, talk about in uh, experimental statistics basically but uh, uh, we are not going into the details of that it's important to realize what are independent variables what are dependent variables and there can be moderating or mediating variables as well we are not going to get into the details uh, we, we've spoken of about that in an earlier video uh i'm sure uh, uh, we all remember about the mean and uh, the standard deviation that we've spoken about earlier mean is the average and standard deviation if you remember was the variability so basically is the square root of variance and variance was found out as an average of the sum of squared errors if you remember from our earlier class you would remember that uh, uh, how how standard deviation uh, is obtained and we know that standard deviation is a very very important measure and even today in just a moment's time as i go and talk about the normal curve and all will realize that standard deviation is a very very important indicator so uh, we will keep coming around that so uh, if we uh, uh, you know at times we standardize all those uh, 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 data that we have by uh, uh, you know uh, subtracting it from the mean and then dividing it by standard deviation so the score that you get there is they are known as z values we'll come back to z values in moments time again so if we if we just take the raw data and we subtract uh, from it the mean and then we divide it by uh, 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 the standard deviation we get what is known as the z value so this z value again is a very important value so this this is what we known as uh, this is what we uh, call standardization so what is standardization standardization is where we uh, convert the raw data into this kind of a thing where the mean becomes zero and standard deviation becomes one so that's for a lot of inferences that we want to draw out of our statistical data uh so these this is the uh, normal curve the uh, well known and uh, this is one we which will keep on coming back to the bell curve the normal curve it 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 is it is it is so very uh, uh, popular it is so very common in statistical analysis that you know normally people try and understand okay normal means this is a uh, uh, i mean the literal meaning is normal so normal uh, has has certain characteristics which we will just describe so normal uh, for for normal c it has to have certain characteristics if i have to just uh, uh, tell you even i mean this this is uh, something which is which reflects real life as well say for example if you have the height of students then you will see that majority of them will be around this average if you see that this has the highest frequency if you can see the screen closely you will see that this is the score say for example 5 feet 8 inches or 7 or whatever that is where the majority of the people are so if you take that that will be the highest uh, uh, i mean uh, this has the highest frequency there are very few people who will be very very tall 
and there'll be very few people who will be very very short otherwise it will just uh, you know the majority of the of the, of the population will be around this particular uh, 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 curve so uh, i mean it's important we realize that, i mean the importance of uh, uh, these uh, uh, normal curves because a lot of uh, what we do will be related to these uh, normal curves and uh, they have a certain other connotations as well which i'm just going to talk about uh, in a moment's time uh the one which you see on the right i mean this is where uh, this is one we say is skewed because here the uh, i mean the lower i mean the uh, higher scores are there uh, in in greater frequency so this is skewed towards the left and we could have a, a right skewed as well so we know we will talk about measuring the skewness also but you can understand just by the uh, by the uh, diagram here that one of the diagrams is, is, is skewed the other is not skewed so we'll 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 uh, come back to this uh, uh, again right all this has a very very important meaning so if you remember the uh, standardization i just spoke about you know this is just about the uh, normal distribution i mean this is known as the normal distribution this is the probability a uh, uh, function probability means what is the probability of a particular score falling in a particular area so these two are very similar as you can see this is the normal curve we have just taken the scores and we have plotted that on a frequency this is the bell curve we get and a uh, probability function for a normal distribution also looks like that and this is a very very important thing that you must remember uh, uh, for for all your uh, uh, statistical analysis that this tells us that this is the mean and uh, this since this is a standard uh, we have standardized it so the mean is zero here otherwise also if you regard this as the mean the majority of the uh, uh, population will be between uh, minus 1.96 to 1.96 of the standard deviation say for example i just spoke about height say uh, the height is 70 inches for example and uh, uh, the standard deviation is uh, say 4 uh, uh, inches so what we are suggesting is that i mean 2 into say uh, just take 2 so 2 into 4 is 8 so 70 minus 8 is 62 and 70 plus 8 is 78 so uh, 95% of the population will be between 62 and 78 inches and that's a very very important prediction to make once we know the uh, mean and once we know the standard deviation we can safely predict how uh, what is the probability of that particular uh, score occurring so 95% of the population will be between minus 2 uh, i'm i'm just trying to you know uh, kind of uh, 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 approximate it to the closest whole number so it's minus 1.96 technically but i'm uh, making it 2 just to make it up appear simpler so the majority of the population will be between minus 2 and plus 2 standard deviation so if i know what is the standard deviation and if i know what is the mean then i can safely predict that uh, 95% of the population will be between this and this or if we take this then we can safely predict that about 66% of the population will be between minus 1 and plus 1 standard deviation so standard deviation as i keep on telling you is the variability if the variability is less then the uh, uh, curve will not be uh, i mean the curve will be a lot thinner i mean if i can draw it here let me show you i mean uh, if it is a smaller thing then it will be like i mean it 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 will go inside it will not be uh, right this is not a good drawing anyway so uh, this is uh, what we get from a normal curve normal curve tells me the probability of a particular thing occurring or not occurring so i'm just you know uh, repeating it uh, in 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 another diagram here just to explain it so 68 95 99.7 this is a rule so if it is a normal curve then 68% of the population will be between minus 1 and plus 1 of the standard deviation so if the standard deviation is 4 uh, i mean let's think of this as the height and if the mean height is 70 inches then 68% of the population will be between 66 and 74 inches i mean minus 1 standard deviation and plus 1 standard deviation if 
uh, I mean, again, if, if I take the same example, then between 62, I mean, 70 minus 8 will be 62, and 70 plus 8 will be 78. So between 62 and 78 will be my 95% of the population. And 99.7% of the population will be between minus 3 and plus 3 standard deviation. That is why the normal curve is so very important. That is why, you know, uh, I'll tell you how, how easy it is to obtain these normal curves. As I've just told you, it's, I mean, even if you take uh, a normal normal uh, data from 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 a small population the uh, frequency will approximate to this normal curve so this normal curve is very very common in, in statistics but it's so very important because it provides us with all this important information so it's not just about the curve it's about what it tells us so it tells us that 68 percent will be between minus one and plus one of the standard deviation uh, 95 will be between minus two and plus two of the standard deviation and 99.7 will be minus three and plus three of the standard division and that's a very very important thing to understand now i'm going to explain another very important term which is known as the standard error i mean this uh, diagram has been taken from uh, uh, the wonderful book by uh, andy field uh, so this is a very good illustration so I've, I've just taken the figure from there uh say this is the population and the mean of the population is three. Very, very important. Uh, we have to just, uh, I mean, understand the logic behind that. And then a lot of the other things will become very, very simple. This is the entire population with a mean of three. Uh, I mean, it could be age or it could be anything. Or uh, say their, their average income is uh, three lakh rupees, whatever. So this is the uh, population. From the population, we draw various samples. So we are drawing one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine samples. When we are drawing samples, their mean will not always be three. It, it will be different because we are drawing sample and it, it is just an approximation. So a sample will not always represent exactly what the population is, but it will be very close to the uh, population mean. So I took out this sample. The mean here is three. I took out another sample, the mean here is 2. I took out another sample, the mean is 4. Another sample, the mean is 3. Another sample, the mean is 1. Still another sample, the mean is 4, 3, 5, 2. So these are my sample means. If I take my sample means and if I uh, you know, put it across in, in, in a bar diagram like that, I will get the well-known and the very important normal curve here so the sample the distribution of the sample means from a population is also in a normal curve and this is a very important uh, thing to have because the moment i have a normal curve i can draw a lot of conclusions out of that because you know i don't know what does the population mean i only know what is the sample and from the sample means i can find out what is the uh, mean of the population another very very important thing that these means they also have a standard deviation of course they will be having a standard deviation because how far they are from the mean the mean is, is three the mean is uh, we know uh, what is the population mean so uh, there is some uh, standard deviation if i take the standard deviation of these sample means i know it, it, it might sound confusing at, at the beginning but it, it, it's quite easy uh, if, if i take the uh, standard deviation of the sample means that standard deviation is known as the standard error. So standard error is nothing but the standard deviation of the sample means. As simple as that. So it, it, again, it tells me the variability. If the standard error is more, then the variability is more. If the standard deviation is more, the variability is more. But we can draw very important conclusions out of that. And this is one very important. Uh, so just explain the standard error. I'm not going to explain that again. But the, one of the most important theorems in, in statistics is that if you have a population with a mean mu, the population is always with this Greek letter. So for some reason, they want to scare us with Greek letters. That's why all the th these things are in Greek letters. And a standard deviation of mu, and we take sufficiently large samples, then the distribution of the sample means will be normally distributed, the one I have just shown you. So this is a very important theorem from which we can draw a lot of other conclusions, I don't want to spend a lot of time in that because my main aim is to talk about uh, uh, hypothesis testing, which I am just going to talk about. And we're going to come back to the normal distribution. So that's why we have spent some time about these normal distributions right here.
uh, the tests that we are going to do, they are known as parametric tests because they have to satisfy certain conditions. The one which we did uh, last time about correlation, that was also a parametric test. Parametric tests, they as assume certain statistical distributions. They assume this normal distribution. They assume that the uh, samples are independent. That means they are not related to each other. They assume that we are measuring on an interval scale or on a ratio scale. And they also assume that uh, the, the variance is homogeneous. It's not just in one part of the population. The variance is, is homogeneously spread. These are very four important conditions for parametric test. So just to repeat again, they are independent. That means uh, uh, they are not related. So, so the sample are independent of each other. The distribution is normal. The variance is homogeneous. And the measurement scale is at least interval. It can be a ratio also. So it's at least interval. So if they satisfy these four conditions, then we can do the parametric assumptions. Now we are coming on to a very, very important part, which is known as the uh, hypothesis uh, uh, testing. And here, you know, we have to uh, understand a lot of, uh, uh, you know, important distinction between uh, uh, what is... Uh, uh, the real hypothesis and what what is regarded as uh, 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 you know statistical hypothesis and th there are very important differences there because in statistics we always start with a null hypothesis as we know in in our uh, regular research we will be making hypothesis we will be suggesting just like the hypothesis that uh, is so popular these days the more time you spend in online classes the better uh, at statistics you become so that is a hypothesis which has to be tested now that is my uh, research hypothesis the statistical hypothesis will be slightly different statistical hypothesis is not uh, you know the same as the research hypothesis in such statistics we start with a null hypothesis now let me explain you what it means now, uh, for anything to be scientific, it's important that uh, it must be falsifiable. Let me explain you what it means. Say, for example, if I suggest that uh, uh, there is a peacock in this garden, then it is very difficult to falsify that. If I say that there's a peacock in this garden, you will have to be very, very sure about, you know, how to suggest, uh, how to say that, okay, there are no peacocks because, you know, it might be hiding somewhere. It might be hiding behind the bushes. It might be on a tree. It might be elsewhere. But if I say, just, uh, I mean, uh, that's what the null, you know, null hypothesis logic is. If I say that there are no peacocks in the garden, it is very easily falsifiable because the moment you see one, you'll say, okay, that is wrong. Your hypothesis is wrong. So that is why a lot of, uh, you know, the things, it's, it starts with, with uh, you know, this falsifiability. So in statistics, we start off with a null hypothesis. We start off with the suggestion that there is no link. We start off with the hypothesis that there is no link between uh, uh, the amount of time you spend on online classes like these and your understanding of statistics. So we start off with a null hypothesis. And we will try and uh, uh, prove the null hypothesis wrong, which can be done statistically. So if I can prove, so I know this uh, sounds convoluted at the, uh, at the start because we are trying to suggest, okay, there is nothing here. And I'm trying to prove it wrong. No, when we are saying uh, it's nothing, you are wrong. So when there is uh, when uh, nothing is wrong, that means there is something. So let me explain it to you. So uh, it, it, it must not be too literal. So let me just go back to the presentation again so that uh, we can uh, draw some uh, more uh, conclusions out of that. So uh, the hypothesis we normally want is the alternative hypothesis, which is uh, uh, by H1. So when I prove my null hypothesis wrong, my alternative hypothesis gets uh, uh, you know stronger. So alternative hypothesis is always the uh, other side of it. As I said, right now I suggested that, OK, there is no relation. So uh, the problem with using a pen is that with the, so when I'm saying that there is no relation, that is a null hypothesis. And if I prove that the no relation thing is uh, wrong, that means there is some kind of a relation. So in, in, in uh, uh, statistics, I'm writing with a mouse. That's why my writing is better than usual. Right. Otherwise, it's worse. So 
so no relation is the null hypothesis there is no relation there is uh, uh, it is all by chance it is only because of the sampling that we are getting all these variations so that is the null hypothesis the opposite of null hypothesis is the alternative hypothesis so most of the times we are trying to prove the null hypothesis wrong we are suggesting that okay the uh, uh, null hypothesis that you start off is uh, uh, not correct so i'm uh, you know as 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 young researchers most often you know people say that why do we have to go this convoluted way why can't we just have the alternative hypothesis because uh, you know with uh, numbers i can uh, 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 very easily prove uh, null hypothesis is wrong or right with probability and numbers have a wonderful way of presenting itself i mean just take a coin if you flip it once it is head if you flip it again it might come back head again in the second time if you flip it the third time it might come heads again but if you have a large number of you know these flipping of the coins then you might have 50 uh, heads and 50 tails unless you're using uh, amitabh bachchan's uh, coin from shole uh, you are going to get uh, uh, 50 heads and 50 tails same with you know rolling of a dice i mean that is what you know the theory of numbers is that and that is what probability is and it, it's so important to realize that okay it's always you know so very uh, specific so if you if you throw a dice uh, and if it's a, a good dice and it does not belong to shakuni mama then you know if i take uh, 600 uh, uh, you know uh, samples from that or 600 observations from that uh, there is a chance that uh, 100 will be one uh, another 100 will be two another 100 will be three so it is about large samples it does not mean that if it is heads one the next time it will always be tails so it's not about those small population but in a large sample this is how it goes out so that is what we are trying to predict here we are trying to predict the probability of the null hypothesis i'll just come on to uh, talk about that so basically in hypothesis testing we're going to talk about this we formulate a null hypothesis then we formulate an alternate hypothesis which is basically h1 then we uh, select a test statistic we'll talk about the test statistic in a moment's time we specify an alpha level which is uh, we'll will uh, talk, uh, again talk about that in a moment's time the necessary assumptions i've just spoken about the parametric assumptions and all and then we calculate and then we uh, have the conclusion so uh, just to repeat it again we need to have the null hypothesis and the uh, alternate hypothesis and after that we'll have to define an alpha level and alpha level is a very very important part of statistics is generally either 5% or 1% so uh, when i'm saying uh, when i'm putting the alpha level as 1% what i'm suggesting is that the probability of the null hypothesis being true is less than 1% the probability of the null hypothesis being true is less than 1% if i take the alpha level as 5 then i am suggesting that the probability of the null hypothesis being true is less than 5% if it is more than 5% i will reject the null hypothesis i will say okay the null hypothesis is not correct i'll have to go for the alternate hypothesis and this is a very important uh, uh, assumption to make and after that we'll have to talk about certain test statistics today i will talk about t test there will be other tests also in our future classes so important to uh, uh, know about these test statistics as i said you know this is done by excel and spss and r and python so we don't have to bother about all that but we have to know about the logic behind these things and finally you'll have to calculate so we'll calculate this and uh, we'll have to draw inferences from that so the null hypothesis significance testing that we're going to do today uh, in in a moment's time we are going to talk about these different things so now let's talk about uh, these p values uh p value as i said it can be 5% or it can be 1% so when i say uh, 5% it means that the p value the probability value is 0.05 5% means 5 divided by 100 it is 0.05 uh if i take it as 1% then it will be 0.01 so just try and understand that when we are when we this p value can be calculated in statistics this is being calculated so you calculate the p value for your null hypothesis if that 
p value is is uh, uh, less then we uh, uh, you know uh, reject the null hypothesis so let let let, let me just uh, uh, show you so uh, p value is less than 5% means you know uh, it, the chance of uh, the null hypothesis happening is very very less but there are certain errors you, you can understand we can never be 100% sure so even with such kind of uh, benchmarks there is a possibility of error there are two types of error and these are very very important questions and even uh, seasoned statisticians seasoned researchers they have a tough time you know uh, recalling back what is type 1 and what is type 2 error so please uh, listen to this carefully type 1 error is false positive that means you are rejecting the null hypothesis when it actually is true so uh, false positive means you are saying a person is 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 is, is corona positive although he is not corona positive so as you can realize this is not a very bad thing to do because you know even if you are suggesting he is a corona positive you can you can uh, uh, you know uh, 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 you know uh, give him medicines which he does not require probably but false negative again is a very uh, you know dangerous test you are accepting the null hypothesis when the null hypothesis is wrong i know it sounds very convoluted for the first time but you know you will get used to this so uh, the false negative means that the person actually has covid 19 but he has been shown to be uh, not having covid 19 so that again is a very dangerous thing so you treat him as very normal and then you know uh, he might have very dangerous complications so uh, when you reject the null hypothesis when h0 is false then it is the correct decision because this is what we try to do you are rejecting the null hypothesis when the null hypothesis is actually to be rejected but the null hypothesis is true and then you reject it then it is a type 1 error you do not reject the null hypothesis but the null hypothesis is actually false that is the type 2 error so just remember type 1 is false positive type 2 is false negative we'll keep on coming to these errors these are very very important uh, decisions to make in statistics so as you can understand uh, uh, we are going to talk about one tailed and two tailed tests when uh, the alternative hypothesis is that the uh, mean is greater than the uh, 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 you know uh, a particular number so the probability is is just this part one tailed means it, it it has to be either more or less two tailed means it might be either more or less so two tailed tests are more uh, uh, preferred uh, at times because you know the uh, amount of uh, uh, you know uh, stringent conditions that you are laying there is is slightly smaller so i will not spend a lot of time in that but uh, just to explain to you that it can be a one tailed test where we are we are straight away saying that the mean of this population is uh, or mean of this sample is greater than that sample if i am saying either greater than that means i am giving it a direction i am say if i am saying it less than even then i am tell, telling it a direction but if i am saying that the mean is not the same as the other one then i am talking about two tailed so it can either be less or it can be more so there is no direction there so many of the tests are two tailed tests so this is again a very important as i said uh, 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 decision to make based on your research questions based on what you're trying to find out based on your assumptions so they can be one tailed or two tailed tests now again you know these are as i said uh, if you remember the z values and this is where we are coming uh, we'll just uh, in three or four slides i'll be coming to the demonstration part of it, it it's it's very easy so as you know that if it is uh, uh, i mean uh, the probability value is uh, uh, this thing 0.05 anything below that we are we are rejecting that so that would be in the uh, 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 i mean if if i if i get a value here or more than that that will be uh, uh, we say if if the stat, i mean if the uh, uh, z value is more than this value then i will reject my null hypothesis or if the uh, p value is less than this value i will re reject the null hypothesis so very important to know the level of significance level of significance could be 0.05 I, i will demonstrate this to you in a moment's time level of significance could be 0.05 or 0.01 or level of significance could be uh, the critical values critical values we get from tables we'll talk about critical values again here so if you can see this closely here here it's uh, 
I mean, this is the uh, uh, one tail test. So this is about 0 0.05. And the Z value is 1.645. So if the Z value is more than 1.645, then the null hypothesis is rejected. In a two tailed test, you can see the critical region is just 0 0.025 on the left and 0 0.025 in the uh, right. So here, I mean, it has to be more than uh, 1.96. If the Z value is more than that, they reject the null hypothesis. Uh, the power of the test is uh, calculated by 1 minus beta. What is beta? Beta is the type 2 error. Uh, often, you know, we will uh, talk about effect sizes. And I'll just take another moment's time because I know we are, you know, putting in a lot of things together in, in, in uh, one video. But again, you know, this is important. Uh, just p-values is not enough. P-values just tells me whether there is an effect or not. If you remember from correlation, we you know we had a correlation value which could be very less. So even if there is an effect, the effect size could be very less. So it's important to talk about effect size and confidence intervals also. So just p-values are not enough for our uh, tests. So uh, we'll we'll talk about that. P-test. So say for example, I have a population of uh, boys and girls, and the marks they're getting in uh, uh, communication research. The t-test tells me how statistically significant these differences are. That means, I mean, the null hypothesis would suggest there is no difference. But uh, the, t the test statistic, if you remember, we, we were talking about the test statistic here tells us how significant these differences are. So uh, if, if I'm getting the uh, differences as significant, then I'm rejecting the null hypothesis. I'll, I'll take another uh, uh, five minutes to uh, do some exercises on Excel, where I will, you know, uh, uh, demonstrate some of these things uh, very quickly. So uh, initially, it might appear a lot bit more intimidating than it is, but uh, these things uh, are extremely. Uh, uh, I mean, it, it makes a lot of uh, good logic. So let me just talk about. Uh, Let's take a sample. Is the screen visible? Can someone please confirm? Is the screen visible? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, okay. So say for example, I'm having these two marks for these two groups. Uh, uh, okay, group uh, A and group so this is uh, I'm just having between these two so my null hypothesis is that there is no difference between these two uh, I'll just try and zoom it a little bit more so that you can understand uh, you remember I mean we need to go to data and then we need to go to data analysis if I want to get a descriptive statistics about these two variables descriptive means about the mean median more skewness everything I just have to click descriptive statistics here Put OK here, and then I'll have to tell what is the input range. And where do I want the output range? Say I want the output in a different worksheet. Uh, Okay, let me have the output in a different worksheet. If you can see the screen, you can realize that, okay, I'm getting these descriptive statistics for both my variables, it is telling me that the mean score for group A is 511. The mean score for group B is 595. It is telling me the standard error. If you remember, we just spoke of standard error. It is telling me that the standard error is 3.88 for group A and 3.78. It is also telling me that the median for group A is 500. The mode for group A is 500. It's telling me the standard deviation is 89. So I'm sure you can understand the standard deviation would mean that uh, if, if you have to predict uh, where the scores will be, it will be very easy for me to tell. 
and if you can see the largest and smallest here you know it will make sense the largest uh, value is 300 and the smallest value is 780 so the, uh, 99 percent will be between minus 3 and plus 3 of the standard deviation as you can understand skewness anything less than 1 means it's not very skewed range means uh, between uh, greatest and highest and here in, in excel the confidence interval means uh, something else but i'm not going to uh, spend my time here so we get a lot about descriptive statistics uh, from excel itself we don't have to you know uh, uh, go elsewhere it's just there so if i have to find out anything about descriptive statistics it's there just at one click of a button uh, but if i have to uh, find out about the null hypothesis that i just spoke about so how do i do that that again is very easy so uh, just to remind you if the data analysis does not show you show up on your excel sheet you'll have to go to file you have to go to option and in option there is something called as add in in add in there is excel add in and you'll have to add in uh, analysis tool pack and analysis tool pack vba you'll have to say okay and then you will get data analysis on the right side of your screen so for the statistical analysis part, it is not there in the default uh, uh, Excel ribbon. It has to be uh, uh, activated. So we click on to data analysis. If you, I mean, this is very small, I know. Uh, and unfortunately, this can't be zoomed. We take t-test, two sample assuming equal variances. I'm assuming equal variances. Uh, it can be unequal variances also that I'll try and show later on. So if I take this two test and if I put OK, I have to say what is in range 1. So here is range 1. The group A marks. I'll have to uh, suggest what is the uh, range 2 also. That will be the group B marks. You can specify the numbers also, but I just wanted to show it to you to make it appear easier. Labels. The hypothesized mean difference is zero by default. It is saying that the mean difference between group A and group B, there is no difference. Where do I want to get the output? I want to get it in this particular sheet itself so that I don't have to go anywhere. This is the output. Please see this carefully. So, the important things are here. Uh, the mean and all we know from, from the earlier uh, descriptive statistics, so that's not important. The p-value for one tail is 2.3373 e to the power minus 48. That means so many zeros and then. That means it is significant. If, if you remember, if the p-value is less than 0.05, if the p-value is less than 0 0.05, that means the probability of the null hypothesis is being true is less than 5%. So the p-value is much less than 0 0.05. And that has to make sense to you. And this is where, you know, uh, these things are important. So if, if I have to talk about p-values, the p-value for one tail and for two tail, it is much less than 0 0.05. That means this is significant. That means the t-test is telling me that the mean between A and between B is significant. And that's a very important test to have. In a moment, Sam, I'll show you another example where the p-value will not be significant. So that I will talk about another hypothesis. And then the test statistic, it is telling me that the t-value is 1.6. And the T statistics that I'm getting from this test, uh, you don't have to bother about the uh, sign there. That's not important. Uh, the uh, thing here is 15. And the T value is 1. If you remember, I, I mean, these were two important things that we were suggesting there. That if your test statistic is more than the critical value, the critical value is 1.6. 
and the value I am getting is 15. So the T value is more than the critical value. Or, I mean, if you don't want to talk about critical value, only talk about the P value. The P value is less than 0 0.05 because I've taken my significance as 5%. So if it is less than 0 0.05, that means the null hypothesis is rejected. That means the mean between these two groups, they are statistically significant. They are statistically different from each other. And this is what we do with t-test. We want to find out whether the difference between means between these two groups are important. So it could be about uh, girls and boys. It could be about two groups. It could be about two states. When you have more than two groups, we'll be having ANOVA. That's for a future class. But if you're just having two uh, uh, cases, in that case, we will uh, say that uh, uh, we'll, we'll use the t-test. And the important thing is to find out the p-value. If the p-value is less than 0.5, that means my null hypothesis is rejected. That means my alternate hypothesis is correct. What is the alternate hypothesis? That the difference in means between these two are statistically significant. I'll very quickly show you another example, and then uh, we can. Uh... Can you see the screen? Is yes. The screen the, the uh, district Angul, Balangir, Barasha, this is about the state of Odisha. Can you see that? OK, so uh, just see, I mean, this is the last uh, uh, example that I wanted to show you. So this is uh, about the urban figure. And this is, this is the urban, and this is the rural figure. This is the sex ratio in these districts, in, in Angul and Balangir. These are the uh, districts of Odisha. I want to find out whether the urban and rural differences are statistically significant or not. My null hypothesis says that, OK, there is no difference between the urban and the rural uh, populations. So what do I have to do for that? I'll have to go for a t-test. How do I go for a t-test? I go to data. I go to data analysis. I go to t-test, two sample uh, assuming equal variances. And I'll have to tell what is my variable 1. I'll, I'll quickly tell it that the variable one is uh, from D here to here. I'll have to tell it what is the variable two. I'll very quickly tell it the variable two is from here to here. Uh, hypothesis mean difference is zero. Where do I want to get the thing? Let me let me say I'll, I'll try and get it here. Output I want to get in. Uh, here, for example. So let me get it. Oh, my references got wrong there. Just a minute. There are some hidden references, so it took the hidden references also. I've made just for one state, so I don't want it. Now let's uh, zoom it and please see this closely so that this will make uh, sense to you. If you see the p-value here, and this, we are always looking at the p-value of significance. The p-value is more than 0.05. It is 0.19. This is more than 0.05. And the p-value for a two-tailed test is also more than 0.05. That means the null hypothesis is true. If the p-value is more than uh, 0.05 or 0.01, that means it is not significant. That means the null hypothesis is true. So we reject the uh, uh, our hypothesis that there is a difference in the sex ratio between the urban and the rural population there is no difference that is what we are getting although if you see the means there is a difference the mean for variable one is uh, 907 i mean for the uh, rural and for urban is 922 but they are not statistically significant and that is very important just by looking at the means you can't say whether they are statistically uh, different or not if i just see the actual figure it, it seems as if they are different but they are not different statistically 
if you see the t value again i mean uh, if you remember the statistic that we were talking about the t value here we are getting is 0.8 and the critical t value is 1.6 so this is less than my uh, uh, critical t value so what this means is that the null hypothesis is here accepted the null hypothesis cannot be rejected because the p value is more than 0.05 or 0.01 so this is one uh, uh, idea that we will come back again and again about uh, the p values but as i said the p values are not the only thing there are uh, other indicators about the effect size and the power and all that we will be keeping that for maybe a uh, some some uh, later video but uh, this is what the uh, hypothesis is we uh, provide what is an uh, 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 null hypothesis we we uh, uh, put out our alternate hypothesis we then decide what test we are going to do since we were talking about only two samples the test i went was for a t st uh, t test and t test is a very important test about differences so it's not just about differences you see but whether they are statistically significant or not and they are found out with the p values if my p value is less than 0.05 or 0.01 depending on what uh, uh, level of significance i put in then i i say that it is significant then i reject the null hypothesis but if the p value is more than that then i accept the null hypothesis so that's a very uh, important uh, distinction to understand so we'll have uh,